What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be discussing some of the multiplayer details about the upcoming Mass Effect Andromeda slated to release March 2017. Now, I am a huge Mass Effect fan. I played, you know, thousands of hours of the original trilogy and even uploaded Mass Effect 3 multiplayer content to my channel a long time ago. So I am extremely excited to delve into Mass Effect Andromeda. And why I'm making today's video is, if anyone out there is like me, I really enjoyed the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer specifically. I've spent, you know, hundreds of hours just in the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. I absolutely love it. And that's why I'm really paying attention to Mass Effect Andromeda's multiplayer. The Mass Effect 3 multiplayer was a little bit of an interesting addition. Prior to that point, Mass Effect 1 and 2 had only single player elements. And Mass Effect 3 having multiplayer was actually kind of a controversial topic at the time before release, but it showed that it can introduce a proper multiplayer element, an awesome cooperative element that perfectly fits in with this story narrative. And Mass Effect Andromeda looks to be doing the same thing. In fact, let's get started here with the multiplayer details. It has been said by the Bioware developers that the Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer will be a more evolved and refined version of the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. So they're taking inspiration from what was in Mass Effect 3, the idea that you are a highly trained strike team going into these different areas and trying to accomplish these different missions to, in the end, extract, gain experience and other resources to level up your multiplayer characters. That base idea is, again, carrying over into Mass Effect Andromeda. And Further talking about the continuation of the Mass Effect 3 ideas into Mass Effect Andromeda, there will yet again be a very microtransactions focused experience in terms of unlocking loot. Just like in Mass Effect 3, how you could unlock Spectre packs, etc. And those were pretty much the only way in which you could obtain loot. That is still going to be the general basis of how you obtain loot in Mass Effect Andromeda. You're going to open, it may be different than the actual Spectre packs, but it'll be some sort of random loot box, and that is going to give you your gear. Now, some people upon hearing that, if you aren't familiar with Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, you may be upset to hear that. I mean, it's based upon microtransactions. However, Mass Effect 3 vets, I'm sure, will likely agree with me when I say, that's actually not that bad. I am totally fine with them doing microtransactions again because Mass Effect 3 did microtransactions, you know, from start to finish. But because of that, Mass Effect 3 provided the community with five completely free multiplayer DLCs, adding new characters, weapons, maps, even a new enemy faction. So if they're going to do that in the same vein as they did in Mass Effect 3, where the microtransactions are providing a constant flow of free content, I am all for it. And the way you earned credits in Mass Effect 3 really wasn't too ridiculous or time consuming. It was actually pretty easy for an experienced player to get credits and never have to spend a dime on the microtransactionable chests. So I hope they keep that the same in Mass Effect Andromeda as well. However, Mass Effect Andromeda brings one more interesting addition to this whole formula. It adds what are referred to as mission funds, a third currency that lets you buy weapons and other items that you can get out of these random packs purely without any more randomization. So I'm sure a lot of you guys who may be familiar with Mass Effect 3 going and getting the Cerberus Harrier as an ultra rare weapon, you spent, you know, so much time potentially or you got it right away and that's the downsides of an RNG system. So having this third currency, which it's likely going to be very expensive to spend this mission funds on a certain item, but having the option to do that, like get the one item that you just can't seem to get, RN Jesus is just, you know, screwing you over when it comes to these random loot boxes, you have the option to buy it outright with these mission funds. That, at a surface level, just hearing it, sounds like a fantastic idea. 
The worry, of course, is that because they have this now in the game, they're going to make the boxes much more expensive, much harder to grind for and earn the normal currency to buy the random boxes uh, in-game. However, of course, we won't know the exact specifics of these currencies and the rates you earn them until much closer to the launch, or potentially even after. Now moving on, we have some very interesting details about how the missions themselves are somewhat changing. Now before in Mass Effect 3, you could change certain factors about the mission, change the enemy type, where it is, and of course the difficulty. However, in Mass Effect Andromeda, there's going to be much more factors that you can actually alter with these missions. There's going to be active modifiers that let you decrease the health of your character, for example, or potentially give your character more damage. Damage. Depending on what modifiers you choose, you are going to get less or more of a reward at the end screen. So if you choose to give your character and all characters that go into this mission less health, if you're able to complete the mission, of course you're going to get a little bit of a bonus to experience and perhaps credits, etc. However, if you choose to make it easier, give yourselves more damage, you're going to get less experience and resources than normal perhaps. So this is a kind of a cool factor that you can mess around with these modifiers and change the experience, you know, having the same exact mission with the same enemy type on the same map is going to be different depending on what modifiers you choose. And for the very elite players, it is going to be fun to go into the, you know, the hardest difficulties and then further mess around with these modifiers and just see how far you can go. That's pretty promising actually for the end game. Keeping on this same topic, BioWare also plans to release custom missions with unique modifiers that you can't change. So perhaps we're going to see the return of the weekend events that were in Mass Effect 3. However, there'll be new custom missions that BioWare will give us that will potentially give us extra or special rewards upon completion. So that's pretty cool. Moving on, Bioware has stressed that the different enemy factions that you fight in these different missions, and remember, the traditional enemy factions, Collectors, Geth, Reapers, none of those are actually going to appear in Mass Effect Andromeda, because none of them are present for, you know, this story, the story of Mass Effect Andromeda. So we're going to see entirely new enemy factions, and again, Bioware has stressed that fighting these different enemy factions is going to be a different experience depending on who you're fighting. Some are going to have much more shields, some are going to use much more biotic abilities, you're going to have to adapt your tactics depending on who you're fighting. Furthermore, your multiplayer exploits will have an effect on your single player campaign. Not in any story changing elements, your multiplayer prowess won't affect the ending of the game whatsoever. However, the more multiplayer you play, because you play as the Apex Force Militia Strike Team uh, from the Nexus, it does have a slight again effect on single player. As some of the resources and experience and even weapons you earn in multiplayer will also translate into single player. It was said before that weapons in single player and multiplayer player, no matter where you earn them, they're going to transfer into one another. So if you go into single player and beat a big mission and earn a new weapon, you're going to unlock that weapon for multiplayer. And then if you open a pack in multiplayer and unlock a new weapon, you can also use it in single player. That may change for the final release, but that was the most recent information we've had on that issue. In fact, this is a good time to say that keep in mind the information presented in this video may change. Mass Effect has been extraordinarily tight-lipped about the details of what's going on in pretty much all aspects of the game other than at a base level, with only a few months to release even. So again, some of these things, although they may have been true at one point, may not be true when the game actually releases. And of course, I'll keep you guys updated throughout that entire process. And with all of that being said, there's one last piece of information about the Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer that I wanted to talk about. And if you were a hardcore Mass Effect 3 player, you were going to be very happy to hear this. 
there's actually a new type of experience added in the Andromeda multiplayer. It's referred to as a prestige experience, and it's a prestige mechanic. Essentially, in Mass Effect 3, when you prestiged a certain character, when you prestiged your soldier, for example, you would just level up your overall N7 score, and it looked cool, although it didn't really have any effect in-game. However, in Andromeda, each time you prestige a certain character, you're going to earn this prestige XP. Now the prestige XP goes into your character type. For example, tanky characters, and if you earn enough prestige XP, you will gain added health for all tank characters. Now, the tanky characters was the example utilized, but I think it's more likely going to be that if you level up your soldier, if you prestige your soldier class over and over again, you're going to get slight bonuses for all soldier classes. Somewhat similar to how Borderlands has badass ranks. It's just small bonuses that rewards people for playing more and more and more. And eventually, once you've played enough, those small bonuses start to add up. So that is a very cool offering. Again, especially for the hardcore players that are going to spend a lot of time in this game. Alright guys, now that is going to be it for the latest multiplayer details for Mass Effect Andromeda. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this video informative. Now if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you want to see more Mass Effect Andromeda content, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter. That that's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.